quick is if you change this to service, we'll begin here in the service of Lent with the central uh, order, which is in the service leaflet. And we'll continue from there. Mercy and do forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Lord, Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not bear false witness. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord have mercy. If you say that you have no sin, you deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins and Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done that. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, grant you absolution and remission of your sins, true repentance and amendment of life, Grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Continuing on. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me 
truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember, remember not my sins and my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. <coughs> Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He gathers the humble and doing right and teaches his way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord
I mentioned that at the time that Jesus heard the words of affirmation from his father at the beginning of his earthly ministry. You're my son. With you I'm well pleased. I also mentioned that Jesus heard those same words while he and the three disciples were on the mountaintop along with Moses and Elijah. We heard that lesson just last week. And you'll recall that I reminded you that God is saying those same words to each of us. You're my child. With you I'm well pleased. Jesus' disciples had also heard the voice of God on the mountaintop when it said, This is my son. Listen to him. I believe these words were also meant for you and me to hear as well. The story of the events that occurred on the mountain of transfiguration occurred near the end of Jesus' ministry on earth. He would soon travel to Jerusalem where he would enter into the city of what we call Palm Sunday to be hailed as the new king. But you recall that only days later he'd be arrested and tried and crucified on the cross while that same crowd jeered. Our lesson this morning occurred three years before. It was a time when Jesus had left Nazareth and, and come to the Jordan River where John was preaching, proclaiming that one who would come was greater than he, one whose sandals he was unworthy to unlace, one who would baptize not with water but with the Spirit. And it was into this scene that Jesus came to be baptized by John. During the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at Jesus as he approached death. While this may be a topic that most of us would rather not discuss, it's a fact of life, and it can't be avoided. I think it was Woody Allen who said, I'm not afraid of dying, I just don't want to be there when it happens. And I suspect many of us would echo that same sentiment. That's not a topic that we enjoy talking about, and yet it's because of Jesus' death and resurrection that we're here this morning. Without death, there is no resurrection. We don't know much about Jesus prior to the events of this morning's reading. I suspect that life in Nazareth was relatively uneventful. While Luke tells us of the incident of Jesus being separated from his parents during a trip to Jerusalem and then ending up in the temple talking with the elders, there's really no other childhood stories about Jesus to be found in the scriptures. I suspect that Jesus grew up in a, in a rather, rather normal environment filled with family relationships, the, the development of beautiful friendships, the typical trials and tribulations of learning a trade from your father. I suspect that Jesus grew up in a rather safe environment in a small town of Nazareth. But I also suspect that during those growing up years that Jesus began to be drawn towards something that he might not have understood at the moment. I suspect he might well at times have looked out over the horizon and wondered what it was out there that was for him as he grew older. I suspect that he, like many of those who feel called to holy orders, began to feel God speaking to him in a special way. You see, it's so easy for us at times to see Jesus as being all God and fail to remember that he's also all man. I've talked about this before. I don't believe for a moment that Jesus at birth was full of the understanding of what would happen to him some 33 years later on Catholic. I don't believe he had a grasp of this when he found the temple at age 12. If Jesus had had all knowledge and understanding as a child or even as a young adult, there would have been no need for him to have experienced those growing up years. And yet he couldn't be fully man without having those experiences. If the Son of God is to walk in men's shoes, he has to experience everything that man experiences. Those of a child, an adolescent, teen years, young adulthood with all life experiences that, that each age represents. Jesus had to grow into an awareness of who he was and what it was that he had come to do. And this took time, just as it takes time for you and me to understand who we are and what it is that God has planned for our lives. I thought I had that figured out for me years ago, but I was wrong. Or at least the bishop said I was wrong when he ordained me to the priesthood. I had had a wonderful professional career for many years before I realized that God had a different plan for my life. And I guess it, it took a wise bishop to see that. I, I say that in jest. But 18 years ago this month, the bishop ordained me to the priesthood after many years of doing something totally different. 
Time and time again, I've sat on the commission on ministry and listened to men and women come before the commission expressing what they feel is a call to our head ministry. Many times I hear these people say, you know, I felt that call since I was much younger, but it's taken me several years to truly understand what that call means, and I can understand that. And I believe Jesus might have said something similar to that. God is working in, in his life, but he didn't quite know yet what God was leading him to. Today's lesson begins at the time when Jesus had left the safety of Nazareth, the safety of home and friends and family, and begun a journey that would ultimately end at the cross. I'm not sure that Jesus knew that at the beginning of his ministry. He certainly came to know that, but I'm not sure when that actually came to that awareness in months and years to follow. But all of this began, which is the baptism. Baptism came at a time when Jesus was becoming aware of who he was and what it was that he was about to do. He was about to enter into his earthly ministry, but first he came to John to be baptized. And as Jesus came up out of the water, a voice of God said, You're my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. This may well be the first time that Jesus had heard that voice. It may have been the, the first time or after his baptism that it all began to come together. It all began to make sense. This was who he was, and this is why he'd come. At the time of your baptism, I believe God said those very same words. You're my son. You're my daughter. And you, I'm well pleased. You may not have heard those words, but I believe God said them nevertheless. You know, the baptism that John preached was a baptism of repentance. It was meant for those who were sorry for their sins and who wanted to return to God. But Jesus hadn't sinned. He didn't need to return to God. He'd never been away from God. But for Jesus, baptism was truly a sacrament. And what is it we learned a long time ago? The definition of a sacrament. A sacrament's that outward visible sign of an inward spiritual grace. And then if we look at the catechism and goes on, it says, given by God as a sure and certain means by which we receive that grace. Jesus at his baptism said, I've made a decision to leave the comfort to home and family and accept the challenge of the Father, the challenge that God has placed before me. Jesus said, I want to be identified with all those who are coming after and returning to God. I want to seek the approval of my Father for what I'm about to do. And finally, he said, I need to be equipped for the task that's ahead of me. These are the same things that you should be saying as baptized Christians. That's what Jesus did. He made a decision. He identified with all of God's people. He received God's approval. God said, you're my son. I'm well pleased with you. This is a, that was a pretty good approval, I would say. The Spirit of God in the form of a dove descended on him, and he was equipped for all that might lie ahead. That's what Jesus did at his baptism, and that's exactly what I think we're called to do, to follow the example that was set before us. We're called to make a decision to be identified with other Christians, to receive God's approval, and to be equipped for our own ministry. And then there are those times when our skills and our faith and our trust will be tested. The scripture says that as he was coming out of the water, that a dove descended on him. And then we read that the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. Now in the scripture, that phrase 40 days is used the same way that we might say something might last a, a week or so. It, it's not an exact time. It was said that Moses was on the mountain with God for 40 days. We read in 1 Kings that Elijah took 40 days and 40 nights to travel to Horeb when he was fleeing from the wrath of Jezebel. Well, it wouldn't have taken 40 days to make that trip, but it did take a considerable time, and hence the phrase 40 days. 40 days signifies completeness of time. In the scripture, the term 40 days represents whatever expanse of time was necessary for something to completely take place. And we read that the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. That sounds strange. The same Spirit that had descended on Jesus at the moment of his baptism immediately drives him into the wilderness to be tempted. What we have to learn here is that God does not tempt us in order to bring us down. We're allowed to be tempted in order that we might grow stronger in our faith and our trust in God. It just seems like some of us need more of those opportunities to grow than others. 
And some of us seem to stay in the wilderness longer than others. Maybe tempted more than others. Think about that for a moment. We all have experienced some kind of mountaintop event in our lives. And when we do that, it may be easy to give God credit for those times. But what happens when we find ourselves in the desert or in the wilderness, seemingly all alone, being tempted? Is it possible that this too is part of God's plan for our lives? If you were a coach with a young second string player who showed great potential, what would you do? Well, you certainly wouldn't move them down to the third string where there's no challenge, no opportunity to learn and expand their talents. And then you wouldn't leave them where they are, marching in place, going nowhere. No, you'd place them with the best players, and you'd have them push them to excel and become even a better player. God doesn't send us into the wilderness to break us. He does so in order that we might grow stronger. Why do we place steel in the fire? Not to destroy it but to form it and make it even stronger. <coughs> Tempered steel made stronger through fire. The Greek word for Satan is diabolos. Sounds a little bit like our Spanish word El Diablo, doesn't it? Diabolos means a slanderer, one who tells lies about another person. And this is the role that Satan played in the story of Job. Satan, the devil, lies to God and he lies to you and me. Now, he doesn't fool God, but he can do a number of folks like you and me when we let him, when we let our guard down. The Jewish view of the world is seen as a world with God and God's adversaries, with Satan becoming God's greatest adversary. In the New Testament, Luke says it was Satan who was behind human disease and suffering. Remember, they believed that if a person was sick, that there had to be some unforgiven sin in their life. Peter says that it's against the power of Satan that we must constantly battle. Matthew says that Satan will bring about man's final destruction. And it was James who wrote, he reminded us of Satan's power that was being broken by the work of Christ. The essence of the temptation story is that Jesus had to decide how he was going to do the work that he'd come to do. What form would his ministry take? Remember, Jesus was all man. Believe it or not, he didn't always have all the answers. He just knew where to find them. That may be why he spent so much time in prayer with the Father. Might there be a lesson there for you and I? We can truly know and understand God's purpose and will for our lives unless we spend time allowing God to speak to us. Jesus had just been acknowledged by God and the Spirit of God had descended on him. He knew that there was a ministry in front of him. But how would that task be accomplished? On one hand, the Father said, take my love to the people and love them until you die for them. Then there was Satan saying, use your power to force man to submit to your will. You don't have to endure pain and suffering the cross. Interestingly enough, both goals were the same, to draw people to God. It was the method that was the question. Satan said, these are your servants, subjects. They're, they're your God's son. Take control. Whip these people into submission, and the whole world is yours for the taking. God said, son, these are your brothers and sisters. Conquer them by your love, even if there are those who will destroy you. In Mark's gospel, he ends the story by simply saying that the angels waited on Jesus. But it's interesting in Luke's account, the same event. He says, when the devil had finished that distinction, he left him until a more opportune time. Satan's coming back. What does this tell us? There, there's something that God and Satan have in common. They're both very persistent. The devil says, okay, you've got by me today, but I'll simply wait for another opportunity to arise in order to get back to life again. And believe me, the opportunity will arise, sometimes sooner than we might imagine. Our lesson ends by saying that Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. How do people get the good news of God's love today? Well, some get the magazine articles some from radio, TV, some may come to church, hear about God's love. But the best way to spread the good news of God's love is the same today as it was in Jesus' day. The best way is for you and me to tell others about it. You and I should be like the paper boys in the past standing on the street corner crying out extra, extra, read all about it. God loves you. We began the Lenten season seeing Jesus as he begins to see his ministry. 
how they lead who's over there. He sees that he has other options, and yet he accepts the task that's been laid out by his father. He accepts it out of love for his father, and others love for you and me. The good news this morning is that Jesus, like Jesus, we're never alone. Even in those moments when we may seem lost in our own wilderness, surrounded by a world that seems to oppose us on every side, we too have God's angels with us. Think about this morning's lesson. If you've been baptized, you've been adopted into God's family. But being a family member brings with it certain obligations and certain responsibilities. This is just as true of God's family as it is in our own. But it also brings us an assurance that we have God's love and protection in all that we do. There are times when we may feel that we've stumbled into the wilderness and there's no way out. That's not the case. Remember that God said, you're my son, you're my daughter. My angels are prepared to see you through the situation. Only trust in me. So I invite you to think on these words during the coming week as we continue the season of Lent, always remembering that God's good. All the time. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in the power of Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Court for justice, freedom of peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, and justice, oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, homeless, and needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth.
Jennifer Destry. Jim, Roger, Les, Carol, Micah, Harry, Paul, Amy, Lula, Jones, Rick, Barbara, Sam, Susan, Joe, Mark, Jimmy, Cass, Lincoln, For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the proceeds of this one. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King. We pray for all of those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon us. We pray for you, Father, to deliver from our sins. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks to thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 and our God of hosts, heaven and earth are all thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Most high. All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who that thou thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in any holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, Till this coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take hey, it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, 
This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord, Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of thy Son has commanded us to make, having remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the Son. We will come to the seeks your merciful Father to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church maintain the mission of thy sins and all other benefits of here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. To be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, who may dwell in us. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory unto thee, Almighty Father, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We do not presume to come to this thy table of the first world, trusting in our own righteousness, to in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, and for our gifts always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so that you will be glad as thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to take his life, and may never more dwell in him, and to be in us. The gifts of God and the people of God, take them in remembrance of Christ's God, you will feed on him in the heart by faith.
I know Zach has a birthday tomorrow. Your wife has a birthday yeah. next Annette. Saturday, right? Annette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So give her a hug for us. Back him up here and let her give you a birthday present. Okay. Unless you want yours too, because you weren't here. Go with me. Oh God. God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servant's act as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let's serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.